here. You can see the previous owner used <laughs> used the stapler to fix the uh, this panel. Actually, the stapler is still in the car. I believe it's this one. Yep. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the second ever episode of this cheap drift car built project without cutting any corners. I'm still working on the name, but you get the point. So, like I mentioned in the last episode, I'm gonna check out the car thoroughly. Um, well, I did check out the car a little bit, but for like suspension, chassis, um, other details, I haven't looked at it yet. So, it's gonna be the first time for both you and me. Uh, yeah, let's get it. All right, let's start from the outside. Car is pretty dirty. Somebody just pulled up. I don't know what they're trying to do. Probably trying to go to the backyard. There's a back house behind my house, but the car is kind of dirty. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up very soon. And as you can see, it came with these chrome five spoke, very heavy wheels. I actually got the same set on my last C36, which was that one. Uh, that car came with ex these exact wheels, but uh, it didn't come with the center cap. I don't think the center cap make these wheels look better in any way. <laughs> I really don't like how they look. But the good thing is, I have my own wheel company. Uh, I have some spare other BMW wheels. I have these wheels. Yeah, I can put those on when I feel like it. But um, the weather strip is uh, kind of, you know, on the way out. Definitely need to clean up the rear tint from the inside. Um, everything else looks pretty good. Um, a little bit of rust over here, easy fix if I ever decide to fix it. This is the front end. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is get a uh, M3 front bumper from eBay and then an M3 rear bumper or just get the M3 rear diffuser from eBay. Uh, yeah, and then maybe some rear flaps on, on the side and then paint in white, you know, just to match the color. Definitely need to change the front headlight and the corner light, which I happen to have a lot. I got one, two, three, four, somewhere over there. Now let's hop into the car. First thing you see <laughs> is the ripped leather seat. Uh, yeah. Steering wheel, center console, passenger seat. It's also on the way out. Um, don't worry about that. Actually, those pieces uh, are from the firewall. As you can see here, there's a hole. And there's another hole. That's uh, the factory holes on the firewall for the clutch pedal. I mean the the clutch system. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna manual swap this since I have uh, another ZF transmission. I have another ZF um, drive shaft, and uh, I do have the clutch pedal assembly from the blue car. So those are there. Uh, it's really easy actually, you just pull them, pull these back and then you can take, you know, these pieces out by hand <laughs> because how old they are. As for the interior, uh, everything works fine except for the AC, uh, which it kind of clicks once in a while, even when it's off, um, but it definitely doesn't work. So uh, yeah, that's a bummer, but I'm gonna try to fix it. and. If you ever own an E36, or if, uh, if you ever paid attention to an E36, you know this will be the problem. Obviously the previous owner tried to fix it with some interesting glue, <laughs> but I just shove it in between the seal and the, the body and it just stays there. Um, and then also, you can see, yeah, focus. And here, you can see the previous owner used <laughs> use the stapler to fix the uh, this panel. Actually, the stapler is still in the car. I believe it's this one. Yep. Automatic. Disgusting. Oh, by the way, the transmission is on the way out as well. So, definitely need to do the manual swap soon. Now, let's move on to the engine bay. I never noticed the E36 has this trick until I got this car. Pay attention. Now, if you look at here, it opens up and then you can lift it all the way up. That's kind of crazy. Like 
the BMW already thought about that you're gonna swap the engine out or change the engine because you're gonna blow it up or whatever. I'm just kidding. But it's a great feature, super convenient for engine swaps or if you just wanna work on the engine. Anyways, what you're looking at right now is a 1992 BMW M50 B25, 2.5 liter, six cylinder, non vanos it doesn't have a hump and a uh, very clean engine bay very stock everything is clean everything is like oem nothing is changed i think yeah really nothing's really changed except for the valve cover gasket because i changed it last night which gonna be in the next video yeah <laughs> oh, oh and the spark plugs speaking of which let me show you how bad those spark plugs look like so, <laughs> these are the spark plugs. When I took the first one out, I was like, damn. This is the cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? When I took this one out, I was like, damn, it looks pretty bad. Like, seems like the gasket is leaking because, um, you know, the oil got into it. And then when I took the second one out, I was like, holy damn. <laughs> because this one was completely loose. It was not even tightened, and the oil was like all over it. I'm pretty sure like these are not as bad as how they look when, it ju when they just came out of the engine because, you know, I touch it with the gloves and place it on the towel and somehow clean it up a little bit, but it was way worse when they just came out of the engine. So this one's loose, this one's loose, this one's loose, and this one was loose as well. You can see the difference because only this one and this one was tight and everything else was coated with carbon and oil. Well, everything was car coated with oil, but these four were coated with carbon as well because uh, it wasn't completely sealed. And I could tell uh, something was wrong with the engine in the beginning because it was having this, um, like a damn near ticking sound. It actually sounded like um, exhaust leak. In a way, I guess it is <laughs> because the, the uh, combustion chamber was leaking, uh, f like the gas from the spark plug hole yeah this it was so bad i changed it i think the second day i got the car so yeah so this was really really bad um but these are already out of the way uh, i already changed those with the new ones got it from uh, fcp euro and yeah off to the trash you go and the car was leaking oil from the valve cover gasket pretty bad uh, as you can see these are already new i changed it last night what else did I change? Oh, so when I got the car, the car actually had a check engine light. So it was throwing, I believe, 1263 and 1264. So 1263 is um, for the EVAP system, which is that little thing behind the blue tube, um, which is this one. That's the Ah, damn, I forgot the name. I'll put it somewhere on the on the screen over here, probably. Um, so I changed this one. Actually, my friend Gerald got it from a, a pick apart, like a junkyard. Yeah, thank you, Gerald. This one cleared the 1263 one, two, code, and I happened to have a another um, O2 sensor and changed the O2 sensor that cleared up the 1264 code. So no check engine light anymore. So I've checked everything else. Um, everything else was what is happening god damn you need to calm down jesus back to the engine bay um fan clutch is fine fan is fine um somebody have changed the um thermostat housing which is great 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 news so most likely they've already changed the uh, thermostat, probably the water pump. I'll figure it out. I'll look into that. Um, but so far, I've driven this car for a couple hundred miles. Uh, no overheating. Everything's fine. Uh, oh, there is another problem. That black hose where my light is hitting, um, the top of that is cracked. Um, that leads to... Uh, idle air control valve. So I already ordered that from uh, I forgot FCP Euro or Amazon. No, FCP Euro. I got the whole kit. Um, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna change it too. And then, uh, and then this one over here, 
uh, has some oil seeping out. It, it's only sealed by a little O-ring uh, on this uh, valve cover breather. Was it a PCV? Yeah, it's a PCV breather. So, yeah, only sealed by an O-ring. Uh, you can either buy the whole kit if you worry about the holes going out, or you can just buy the O-ring to seal it up. Now the car is on the jack stand. Let me show you guys how to quickly check um, pretty much everything underneath, suspension-wise, chassis-wise, um, drivetrain-wise. Pretty much do a basic checkup on the car, uh, either before you purchase one or after you purchase one, just to see what you need to fix and what's broken. Now this is the front wheel. There are a couple things that you need to check. Uh, let's start with the most obvious one, the wheel itself. You can spin it, see if it uh, wobbles, you know, if it makes any noises. Usually when it makes noises, uh, it means the wheel bearing is going out or there is something caught between um, the rotor and the pad. It doesn't really happen, but it might. And if it wobbles, it either means your um, wheel is bent or the hub is broken. But this one looks fine. Um, and then you can shake it. Make sure your car is on the jack stands first before you, you shake anything. Um, you don't want to shake the car when the car is on the jack. So you can shake the wheel up and down, left to right. Uh, now it's making a little bit of noise, uh, which is normal. There's usually a tiny little bit of play on the a steering rack. And, uh, but the wheel bearing on this side is fine because it doesn't make any noise and it doesn't, doesn't move. And then what you can look at is the shock and the spring. Usually, I bet 90% of us uh, is gonna change our uh, stock shock and springs uh, to coilovers and stuff. But if you are planning to run on the stock shock and the stock spring, uh, you better take a look at it. Uh, as far as I know, the other side of the car, uh, the driver's side, this is the passenger side, the driver's side of the car's front shock is leaking. And I could feel it when I'm driving it, the left front left corner just bouncing up and down once I hit a bump. But this side is actually fine. I'm gonna move you closer, you can take a better look. Yeah. And then another thing, while you're at it, you can take a look at the frame, see if there's any um, frame damage. This side looks fine. And I check the other side, the other side looks fine as well. And one last thing on the front wheel is check the brake pad. There it is. Now you can see there's still plenty of uh, pad life left. While you're at it, you can take a look at the front sway bar bushing. I'm actually going to put thicker sway bar in the front uh, with uh, its own bushing, but this one, the stock one, looks just fine. Now this is the passenger side front shock. As you can see, the fluid is everywhere. Yeah, this is definitely need to be changed. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually um, take the coilover off of the Blue E36 and put it on this one. And I'm gonna actually order a custom built coilovers. I'm thinking either from BC or fuel suspension um, for the drift spec coilovers. We'll see about that. We'll get there eventually. Now, this is the back side, and uh, before you do the rotating check or um, um, wobbling, whatever check, make sure you release the handbrake and put the transmission into neutral. Otherwise, you can't move it. Wheel bearing, that's fine. Also has plenty of pad life left. Perfect on this side. The shock looks fine, um, but the dust booth, it, oh, ooh, ooh. yeah, that's kind of nasty, but it's fine. Uh, we're gonna change it anyway. But as far as I can tell, uh, it drives fine. It's just a little bit, just a little bit old. And now you can take a look at the rear sway bar bushing, which is also fine on this car. Oh, while we're at it, we better check out the rear shock tower as well as front. I forgot to mention earlier. Um, this is a very common failing point on uh, E36 and E46 chassis. Actually, I don't know about E46, but I do know is uh, very common for E36. All right, now we're about to go under the car. All right. Whew. I really need, man, I really need the six ton jack stands, 
to arrive. I actually, I actually ordered four from um, Home Depot, but when they ship it to me, one of the well, both of the boxes were broken actually, and one of the ratchet rod, this one, fell out of the box while they were, I guess, they were shipping to me, and uh, yeah, I ended up with four bases and three rods, so I had to return one of the packages and. Now I'm waiting for them to ship it to me again. Yeah. Ah. Look at this. How look how greasy it is. It's just typical, typical E36. I hope nothing drops into my face. Ooh. Trust me, it doesn't taste good. Ask me how I knew it. Ooh. All right. See, oil leaking from I'd say uh, lower oil pan gasket and. Um, Anyways, uh, we'll get to it soon. Uh, we're gonna check from the front. Uh, this way. All right, now what you're looking at is the passenger side front uh, spindle uh, or hub. Make sure you take a look at the, uh, the ball joints, uh, uh, the linkages. This one actually, oh, this one actually has an M3 design. It's connecting to the shock. Interesting. I guess it's a 92 thing because uh, the 93 I had is connected from the uh, sway bar to the real, uh, the front level control arm. Very interesting. Okay, and then this is a common failing point. This is the front control arm bushing, uh, or you can call it treehouse or lollipop, whatever it is. Make sure to check the bushing of this. Seems fine on this one. And then the motor mount, also a relatively common failing point. Uh, you can just check this by shaking the engine with hand. You can tell immediately, usually. And then I'm pretty sure all of the E36 looks like this um, underneath, unless you just change all the seals. Um, the good thing is it's not really hard to diagnose. And moving forward, you can see the oil over here. Uh, that is from, I would say from this side of the uh, rack. Uh, I'm gonna find out where exactly it's from eventually, but uh, it's not leaking too bad. I guess like a drip or two uh, overnight, which really isn't too bad considering it's a BMW. <laughs> also, if you see excessive uh, oil leak from the back of the engine, uh, it might come from the rear, rear main seal. Uh, as for how to change the rear main seal, you can Take a look over uh, here, I think. Yeah, I actually posted a video about that. Uh, it's about a Jay-Z, but they all work the same. All right, so, if you have a manual, what you're looking at, well, either manual or automatic, what you're looking at right now is the, uh, the Jubal, or somebody call it Guibal. I think it's supposed to be pronounced as Jubal. But, <laughs> no matter how you pronounce it, you need to check it because look at this one. It's all brittle and cracked and about to break. So this one is a common failing point as well. Um, better change it before uh, it fails. But for me, I don't worry about it because I actually order a brand new one for the ZF transmission from uh, FCP Ural and I'm gonna swap it on when I do the manual swap. Now we are looking at the rear of the car. Uh, we can take a look at the rear suspension components. We can take a look at the rear uh, subframe mounting point over here where the subframe meets the... Um... Hold on, whoever is texting me. Uh, where the subframe meets the, the unibody, uh, that often cracks on both sides. So this side looks okay. Uh, I don't really know how it looks underneath. Uh, this side looks okay as well. And then there are two more on this side. You can't really see now. Yeah, but anyways, as long as you know there are four mounting points and you need to check all four, you're good. You see, this side is fine. Yep. Luckily, on this car, all four is fine. I guess because it was owned by uh, an old lady before my friend's brother bought it and is an automatic, so nobody really pushed the car to the limit. And 
check the rear diff mount bushing. Both sides. It's also fine. And then there's actually another bushing in the front. This one always fails as well. You can see it's already starting to crack. Yeah. Eventually I'm gonna need to change it. So that's all you need to check as for the subframe mounting point and the div mounting point. And then now we move on to the control arms. Um, I mean, there isn't much to check. Also, there isn't much room for it to fail because once it's failed, you definitely can tell. <laughs> Even if you don't know anything about cars. But you know, just to make sure that everything is in the place that it's supposed to be at. Shake everything. You know, see if anything, oh, sorry. See if anything's loose. Yep, everything seems fine. Oh, also, before we get out of here, we need to check. This is the rear trailing arm uh, mounting point and rear trailing arm bushing. Uh, you can't really tell the bushing. You have to, you know, dismount this one to see how the bushing looks like. But usually you can use a pry bar or a flathead screwdriver just to pry it, uh, just to stick it in the, into the gap and then move it around, see how much the movement is. So if you can move it around very freely, uh, it means you probably need to change it. And also see if there's any crack on the uh, on the chassis itself. This is also a common failing point on U36. But like I stated earlier, this car being an automatic and owned by an old lady, uh, everything is fine. Everything is just fine. All right, let me get the heck out of here. Oof. All right, I think that's it for today's video. Uh, I hope you guys more or less have learned something from it. <laughs> But yeah, this is pretty much what you need to check before or after you get a car, uh, especially for E36. I'm not sure if I covered all of the common failing point. Um, front shock tower, rear shock tower, all the rear um, mounting points, um, water pump, and oil leaks. Other than that, I think, oh, window regulators and the sunroof regulator. Yeah, they are bad. I gotta be honest, they fail all the time. But the good thing is, all four window regulators are still working on this car. I haven't checked the sunroof yet. I'm not gonna. I don't want it to, you know, get stuck halfway. All right, uh, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, the next video is gonna be about how to change the valve cover gasket on this engine. I've already filmed it, actually. I'm just, you know, you know, you know what I mean. But anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and peace.